just yeah, sort, yeah. sort of an outside-the-box question. Just curious about Tanner Connor and your goals for him this offseason, since we probably aren't going to speak to you again until May or August. Just what, what you'd like to see as a, as a growth area for him this offseason. Um, really just, you know, continue to be a student of the game, learn about uh, some of the things from a run-blocking standpoint, scheme, um, understanding coverages. Uh, that'll be something that I'll try to work with all the guys in the offseason during OTAs because a lot of the stuff that we need to do, we can't do because of the way the rules are with the uh, PA and everything. So I try to use that time to just really teach the guys about football, you know, coverages, fronts, why you're getting this look, you know, best way to attack certain things like that. So that, that's what I'll be doing with him uh, and really with, with all the guys. Yeah. One thing that's fascinating about Hunter Long is – he arrived here as a polished receiving tight end for Boston College. Now he's been used in a lot of blocking packages. Mm -hmm. So what is Hunter Long? Is he a skilled receiver and blocker? What, what have you learned about him? Um, well, it's been quite a journey with Hunter. Uh, we've had some, some interesting times. Uh, the thing I've learned about him, one, is football's important to him. So that, that's good to know uh, with him because there was times I wondered about that. So football's important to him. Uh, he can be uh, a pass catcher as well as a run blocker, and that's obviously, as you know, in our offense, that's that's uh, important if you want to, you know, be a major contributor and all that. So, um, and just really with him, it's about staying healthy. You know, he's ankle sprained, and he had the uh, concussion, and it's not something that um, I'm down on him for. He is, is out of his control and all that, but uh, I think uh, I'm looking forward to this offseason with him as well, just to see um, if, if Hunter can become that complete player for us. Just, 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 sorry, you yeah. just mentioned um, that you at times wondered if football was important. Why, is that something for him or, or why did you have that thought? Why um, did I wonder that about him? Just I, I just sometimes wondered about preparation. You know, how hard did he prepare? Um, you know, and part of it, it's, it's not his fault. It's just getting to know people. You know, that, that's, that's really the biggest thing with uh, the first year uh, when you're coaching new people. It's just really getting to know what's important to them, how they work, how they prepare, um, you know, different things like that. Do they have things going on off the field that can be distractions, all that stuff. So uh, it, it's been a little process getting to know Hunter, and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun, really, um, the last six weeks with him, dealing with him and all that. He's He's handled, uh, he's gotten the short end of the stick a couple times, and he's handled it very well. And uh, like I said, I'm excited to, you know, see what happens with him uh, next year. Just a quick follow-up on, or just on a separate note, um, I hate to ask you kind of a year interview question, but, um, you know, when you look back at, you know, the tight end room that you had in San Francisco, obviously, you know, George Kittle, um, and then you kind of look at, the work that you've done with this tight end room. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you have, in terms of the, the skill set, do you have the tight end to maximize this offense? Because, you know, entering here, we talked a lot about how important the tight end was, not only as right. a receiver, right. but as kind of like a blocker as an extension of the offensive line. So right you want to know, do we have, can that room, can we? Do you have the, the room or the tight end that maximizes this offense? Uh, that's a trick question. Is yes and no. I'm always looking to get competition going in, in, in my rooms. Uh, when I had Kittle, I was trying to get people in there to compete with him as well. So, uh, you know, the, the number one job as a coach, one of, the, one of our top, I think, uh, things that it, to, to be an effective coach is you can never be satisfied. Um, so I'm always looking for people to put in, in my rooms, no matter who's in there. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question or anything, but yeah. What's your honest assessment of Mike Kosicki now that you've had 17 eighteenths of a regular season uh, with him in your offense? My assessment as far as, um, you know, Mike, Mike, it's been up and down. You know, it really has in our room in general. Just It's been up and down between injuries and, um, you know, Mike learning how to contribute without having the ball in his hand. Uh, it's been a process. I think it's something as we've continued to move forward that he's he's gotten better at and it's kind of in, embraced it uh, as much as he can, uh, th that aspect of, of playing this position. But what we do in that room is really unique because you got a pass block, run block, and you, you go out for passes. And 
when, when you're asked to do those different things, sometimes those skills uh, maybe aren't as developed as they needed to be. Uh, maybe they're skills that are completely new, or maybe it's just something that you can't do, you know? And so uh, for me, it's just finding out what, what they can and can't do and trying to put them in those positions. Uh, you know, Mike, you know, I mean, everyone's talked about targets and, and all that stuff and plays and, and uh, you know, that's not something that I, I, I've focused on and I don't feel like he has per se. You know, me and him have had conversations probably once a month just about, you know, what's happened as far as his usage and how we can try to improve it and things that he needs to continue to work on and that's what he's done. Um, you know, we all know what Mike is uh, as, as a pass catcher. There's things I would like him to get better at as a route runner, um, whether it's zone or man releases. I mean, there's always, there's a lot that he can get better at. Uh, and I don't mean that in a negative way. There's a lot, all of us, there's a lot I can get better at. You know what I mean? So um, I thought Mike has, has done a good job dealing with uh, the different things and then you know, you have the quarterback carousel going on, too. So there's a lot that goes on when you're dependent on other people to get you the ball, when you're dependent on certain coverages that we're hoping to get to, to try to get you the ball. And sometimes those things don't go your way. And it, it would have been easy for him to be uh, very frustrated with it. It would be easy for him to try to be a cancer in the locker room and all that. And he's done none of that. So, uh, you know, like I said, all those guys, I'm pleased at how far they've come, we got a long ways to still go. And to that point, what has your communication, your relationship with Mike been like throughout the season? I think it's been good. I mean, you can ask him on it. I mean, we sit around, we laugh and joke. Um, we've had very serious conversations. We've had very lighthearted conversations. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, I think um, it's been good seeing the dynamic between him and Durham. Uh, they're they're like brothers, you know, and so I think having someone like Durham to help him, you know, through the, the tough times has is, is, uh, added to his ability to focus on the next day, the next practice, the next play. John, I think it's probably obvious to anyone who follows the team that Gusecki's likely going to get more money in a larger role elsewhere in free agency. If that indeed is the case, do you believe from the body of work you've observed that Tanner Connor and Hunter Long are ready for more prominent roles with the Miami Dolphins next season? They'll have to be. I mean, unless you know anyone coming through the door. I mean, you got you to do it with what you got, right? And so, you know, whatever we do, that, that's, that's Mike McDaniel, that's uh, Chris Greer, what, you know, what we do in that room as far as adding or subtracting and all that. You, my mindset is whoever you put in there, I'm just going to try to coach them and help them try to be the best version of themselves. John, questions uh, for you in your role as assistant head coach. We know this team is on a five-game losing streak and, you know, injury problems. Uh, you mentioned the quarterback carousel. Where are they mentally and what could get them to the best place mentally going into this game, whether it's team meetings or coaches talking to them? Or what are well, thoughts? I think, you know, sometimes you have to be careful. You can't just, you know, oh, well, let's have player-only meeting. Let's do this. Let's do that. That, that's, that. that, I think, adds to the problem. I think when you look at it, you, you got to look at it from the standpoint as a coach. I look at it as how are we losing and are we competitive? And... Bottom line, we, we've lost, like you said, five in a row, but we've been very competitive in those five. It's been a bounce here or there. And as a coach, sometimes you go back and you look at the games you won. How many games did we win because of a bounce here and there? That, unfortunately, that's football. You know, I believe when you look at the 16 games that are played every week, 12, 13 of them are going to come down to one score. It's going to come down to a two minute. It's going to come down to a field goal. It's going to come down to a punt, whatever it is. And our guys have been right there, and we just have not made the right play, made the right call as coaches. Um, and that's contributed to that's the reason why we've had, you know, five consecutive losses. The great thing about it is we get one more chance at it, you know, and, that, and that's all you can really, as a competitor, as a coach, is you, it's literally that 24 hour cycle. You, you've, 
it's it's like a corner, it's like a pitcher that gives up a home run, whatever it is. You've got to think about the next pitch. You've got to think about the next game. And if you dwell on it, then that becomes a problem. So I think when you look at our team, yeah, we lost five in a row. But I think that if you look at how, com how they've competed, how they've continued to come out going to work, how the next guy up has come in and done the best that he can to try to help us win, we've, we, you know, whether it's a practice squad guy, whether it's a guy coming back, you know, we've, it's, but everybody goes through that. You know what I mean? Every team, you find a team that hasn't had injuries, they haven't played. You know, so everybody's gone through this. And so, uh, you know, for us as, as, as this organization, it's trying to find a way to get that win on Sunday, and then we'll see what happens.